Let's get Amiga on your Pandora Games 3D with RetroArch. What you'll need is a jailbroken system, a wired USB keyboard, a mouse perhaps, a Wi-Fi model, or one of these hubs for Ethernet network. You'll also need space. About 100 megs on your Android parts, and one gig left on your micro SD. If you cannot access this in Windows, you'll need to use a USB stick. Now go to the first link in the description, follow until about four minutes, and grab them ROMs and rename them. Then go to the second link, and extract it to your micro SD. You can remove the zip file, That'll leave us with two folders, the RetroArch and the ROMs. In the RetroArch folder, we have a lot of empty folders. In the system folder here, we'll need our BIOS. So if you check out GitHub and the LibRetro UAE, scroll down until you see the Kickstart ROMs. These are the files we'll need to actually run the Amiga. Important parts are the MD5 hashtags, also the file name. If you have the correct ROM, just rename it to kick 30 One of the most important ones you need for this tutorial is the A600 one, which is kick 40063.a600. If you copy-paste the MD5 hash into a search engine, you'll find them. Wow! ROMs? To check the MD5 hash, all we need to do is click and drag one of these ROM files over to Rapid CRC. Then press the Create MD5 and you'll get your hash. If it's not the same, then find another ROM. If you have a RetroPie already set up for Amiga, you should be able to just use these, but please check them hashtags. Now let's check out the games. ADFs, these are the Amiga disk files. These have been around for years. The internet is full of them. I found a ton. Bosh. These are scattered everywhere. Duck, duck, go them out. If you have a multi-disk game, you'll need to create a zip archive, like so, then plonk in both disks. Like this. Boop. Yes. Boop. Yes. The problem with this is that you'll need to manually switch the floppy drives. We can alternatively use an M3U file. So I'm going to throw on Jesus on the E's. Add the dot M3U at the end. If you want to emulate external floppy drives, we need to add in brackets, MD, like so. Limitation, you can only use up to four floppies. So we have the M3U file, we need to copy paste each file name. I'm gonna click quite slowly, copy. You can use either .zip files or .adfs. Again, check the GitHub for more information on that. Okay, save, and we're done here. But what about the WHD load games? We're gonna plonk them here. The titles from the first link have the advantage of being fixed. These guys are just fixed for the hard drive. They're great! I love WHD load. All right, let's grab RetroArch. Go down to the Android 32-bit and you'll get this one with the RA32.APK. I'm gonna pop this into the micro SD. Or USB stick, whatever you're on. All right, let's safely eject then. Pandori! Okay, first I'll show you how to make some space on the micro SD. Hit the settings button, go to game settings. And then delete game. I highly suggest you remove anything you don't need. For example, some Chinese, Japanese RPGs. To make space in Android, we press on the three dots at the bottom. And then with a the mouse, we hold and drag to App Info. Press on the clear cache, clear data, and then uninstall. 
I believe the old PG3D have limited space, you'll need to do that. Okay, so if you have Wi-Fi, you can use that. But I have the USB Ethernet hub, so I will switch this off. Go to Ethernet. Make sure that's checked on. Clickety-click it. And then we'll save. I'll press the bottom right button here to install the app. Click external storage card. As soon as it's found one APK, I can right click to cancel the search process. Then we can select RetroArch. Tick that. Three dots. Install. Once installed, it may be a good time to restart. And press on the dots, and then RetroArch. For the first time, it'll extract some files. And then we should be in. Now, using it as is should be okay, but I have a limited space on my PG3D, so I'm gonna press on the directory here. And then I'm gonna select some folders from the micro SD I prepared earlier. So I'm gonna go external storage, SD card, RetroArch. And go down to system. I'll use this directory. Do the same for downloads as well. Skip assets and go straight to dynamic backgrounds. Thumbnails. Yeah, file browser, we can do that. I want to start it from my micro SD. I'm going to use it from here. Skip config. Let's do core. I think if it's fully loaded, it'll be around 200 megs. So you want to do this one. Core info. Yeah, skip. Database. You can do all these if you like. Ah, cheap file. This one's around 60 to 80 megs, I believe. Yep, video filter, we'll do that. Audio filter too. Recording output. Remember, we don't want our internal NAND full of this stuff. Overlay. Video layout. Why not? Screenshot. Input auto config, remapping. We want these on the NAND. Otherwise, we won't be able to control it later without a keyboard. Playlists. You can probably keep them on NAND, but you're full. Okay, runtime logs. Yeah, let's get these logs off the NAND. Save file. I believe this is like memory cards, memory sticks like that. Save states. Cash. And more logs. Okay, so we'll quit RetroArch and go back in. All right, it looks a bit like bum, but that's okay. So 
We'll go to online updater. And then update assets. Watch this. Light magic, it looks nice. Okay, we're just gonna go through these. So update control profiles, update cheats. Let's go through them. Why not? Databases. Overlay. GLS little shaders. Now we go to the core downloader. Remember, we want the Amiga. Commodore Amiga PUAE. All right, now come back out. All right, let's set our inputs. So we're gonna go down to port one controls. Retro pad with analog if you can. I'm using the cheapy PS3 copy pads. So device index is that, and then set all controls. And I'm gonna go through each button. It's like A, B, X, Y. This is very similar to a SNES pad. Go through all them and save controller profile. Do the same for port two, if you have a second pad. Save, then quit. If you go back into RetroArch, then hopefully the controls will work. Remember, the controls must be compatible with your 3D in stock, otherwise it just won't work here. Alright, let's go back into the input. And we're gonna go to menu controls. I like the Japanese way of saying circle is okay and uh, cross is not, so I'm gonna switch that to off. And go to hotkeys. Menu toggle gamepad combo. I'm gonna switch this to what fits my controller. So I'm on a pad, so L3 and R3 would be great. Hotkey enable, I'm gonna switch this to select button. Now these underneath, fast forward and slow motion and things like that, I've just removed these by using the square button. Or I guess if you're on a SNES pad, the green one. Why, I believe? All right, so let's go back, and we're gonna go down to where it says Import Content. I'm gonna choose Manual Scan. Contact Directory, I'm gonna choose the ROMs, the Amiga ADFs folder. Remember, this is where the disk files are. Scan this directory. System name, you can leave it as it is, and then where it says Default Core, we will select that to Pui. And then Scan Inside Archives to On, and Start Scan. The playlist should be there at the bottom. Ye. We're gonna do the same for the other folder. So change the content directory. To WHD. And everything else should be fine. So it's gonna go start scan. And there we go. One, two. Okay, so let's go to settings. The video settings. And then, scaling. Integer scale will give you perfect pixel. I'm gonna keep that off and leave that at core provided on the aspect ratio. Threaded video, I'll keep it off so I've got minimal controller lag. We can also go to on-screen display. We check out the overlay, you can turn that on. I've actually got the... Uh, <laughs> I've actually got the scan lines on already. So go down to the preset. And if you want the scan lines, you go to effects. Scan lines. You can choose what you want, but I like the NES guy ones. 
If you want more of an effect, you can raise that like so, or you can lower it. I like the uh, subtle effect of Scanlines. I'm going to leave AI service off. Don't need to do translation or anything. All right, so let's try some games. First up, Lotus Turbo Challenge 2. Mm. Okay, so ADFs usually have a crack throw screen. To get past this, we press the select button. And at the very top left, you've got a left mouse click. So I'm just going to select that a few times. Boop, boop, boop. And, ooh, 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 music, music. Alright, so it seems to be playing okay. But as we can see, we have a big space around the playing area. We also have a very, very noisy floppy drive. So let's press the menu hotkey, go back. Settings, video, scaling. Okay, we can see the game in the back. We turn on integer scale, we can turn it on. We can mess about with these little settings here. But. Look how much faffing we need to do just to get a full screen. We can change the aspect ratio. But you know what? I've got a better idea. Just keep it off. Core provided. We're going to go back to the main menu. Quick menu. Go down to options. Okay, we're going to change the floppy speed to TURBO! It's turbo time. We're also going to go to show video options, turn that on. Show audio options, also flick that on. Close content. And we're going to load it up again. Okay, same again. Let's load up the game. Loading seems much quicker. Yet still noisy. Okay, it's menu out. Go into options. Scroll down to where we turned on the audio and video settings. We have a few more options to play with. Zoom mode, this is the one we're gonna look at. I'm gonna turn that to automatic. Frame skip if you need it. And in audio, we also have floppy sound emulation. I'm going to turn that off. Oh, yeah. So notice at the top right, 
with the numbers, the distortion is no longer there. This is looking brilliant. All right, how about June? Oh no, no mouse! But wait, press the select button and this is JM. That'll switch your joystick to a mouse. Now it can move the pointer. With this, we can use pretty much any mouse game on the Amiga. So Settlers, any of the LucasArts games. Ooh, Zach McCracken would be a good one. Ah, so Chaos Engine. We tried this with two player and it seemed like the controller one was interfering with controller two. So we'll go to options. And here, analog stick mouse, you wanna turn that off. So with these settings, let's try some more games. Quick shout out, thanks to all our patrons. Willem Elbers, Jonathan Doob, Wilbert Rivera, Mauricio Maisterena, Martin Palmer, Ram Pora, Chen Wei Liu, Kevin Sanchez, Francisco, Lee Dragon 999, and Jose Lopez Palenzuela. Thanks, guys. Also, another shout out to our Discord. Thanks to all the party potato people. If you want to join in the party, come to our Discord. If you like the content, please consider backing us on our Patreon. Otherwise, likey, subscribey. Catch you around. Bye!